Welcome to the Destiny Church Tees Valley podcast. As you listen, it is our prayer that you were transformed through faith, hope, and love. Good morning. I just got it in. Ten more minutes and it had been good afternoon. <laughs> Was that all right? I'm going to go back here because I, uh, it wobbles. And um, there's only weebles that I meant to wobble. Okay. Um, I don't know, just um, earlier, um, there was something found, um, and I just wondered if anybody had lost a wad of notes wrapped in a rubber band. (laughs) Because I've got the rubber band. (laughs) I tell you, what you like, guys. Sucked you in, sucked you in there, eh? (laughs) Anyway... Let me just ask you a question. When was the last time that you lost something? When was the last time you lost something? And all you you guys going, well, what what, what a note. That's what I asked. I let let go of my wife's hand and she shopped. So I lost a load of money. I don't know. But it's interesting to think about that because for all of us, we will have lost something. You don't have to live long in life to know that you lose things. Things are easy to lose, yes? As Devation mentioned about his keys, yes? For me, lost my mind. (laughs) Keep looking for it. Where has it gone? Somewhere there, yes? Um, And I was reading a statistic that uh, in 2022, the airlines lost 26 million pieces of luggage. So... The moral of the story, of course, is if you want to keep what you, the, your luggage, is have it on hand luggage, <laughs> okay? Take it on board with you. Keep hold of it. Don't let it out of your sight, yes? Now, <clears throat> I was um, at a, at a uh, party not long ago in Middlesbrough, and, uh, and I lost my car. <laughs> well, actually, it was stolen, but there you go, Okay. <laughs> But, but it was lost in terms of someone else had taken it. So for me, it was lost. Yes? And it was lost because I didn't know where it was. Now, as it is, I have a tracker on my car. Yes? I've thought about putting one on Kath, but there you go. Um, but, uh, but, but I have this tracker. So, but the problem was is that I didn't have access to the website to be able to see where my car had gone. And so, even though the police were out looking for my car, and there'd been the odd camera around the place that had spotted my car, they were unable to retrieve it. And so, from a police point of view, they kept phoning me and saying, um, you know, I, 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 you're obviously not going to get back now. They'll have changed the number plates, this, this, and this. So, it was kind of like, you know, don't bother. Well, of course, because I had this tracker, if I hadn't had the tracker, I'd have probably sent Kath out looking for it. Um, <laughs> But uh, I'm sure she would have found it. Um, so so we, 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 it wasn't till Monday morning that I could get access to it. And so once I had connected onto the website, I would phone the police. And the police said, oh, we'll go out and have a look at it. And so, of course, I went out to, to, to meet them. And when we got there, it was nothing like that I'd seen on my, on my tracker. And so I looked for it. And, um, and it was just in like a, a, a place, um, I'm trying to think where it was now, some high street. And, um, and it, but it was like a village high street, and it was just on the thing. So the policeman said, there's nothing here. Not here. So I, said, I showed him the, uh, the image with the tracker on, and he said, oh, yeah, I've been down there. Um, I've looked down there this morning. There's nothing around there. So by virtue, what he was really saying to me is, don't bother, you've lost your car, just claim it on the insurance, yes? But of course, being me who I am, I don't give up easily, yes? So I knew where to try. So I thought, okay, I, I, I've got the wrong place, but that's where I should go. So I went there, yes? I went, well, where well the police had gone? <laughs> and, then, and then off I went, I thought, I hope they're not going to see me. But... Um, 
because I didn't believe him. Yes, I, I, I have that thing, and maybe you're like that, and you maybe somebody's told you about something, maybe somebody's told you about Jesus, and you just don't believe them. Yes, so you want to look for yourself, don't you? Yes, so I had to look around. There was this old people's home, and when I was looking around, no, there was cars, but nothing like, and I'm kind of going into this whole situation of trying to find um, where could they have put my car? So there's a big field behind there. I thought, I wonder if he saw trips through the field all the way around this muddy field. Nothing there. There was uh, some people walking dogs who thought I was a bit odd, so I escaped quickly. But, uh, but I could see, but I could see the tracker where it was meant to be, where the tracker was saying. So I went off and I disappeared. Um, to, to, and I suddenly, when I, I saw this big wall, and I thought, it's at the other side of this wall somehow. So I said, I run, jumped over the, uh, you know, to look over the wall, and I could see this row of garages. So I knew from a map that it looked like it was in a garage. So I realized I had to go all the way around, and, uh, and so eventually got to this row of houses, and down the side of one row of houses, there was, uh, there was some, some garages. So I'd walk down, see these garages, and I thought, my car is in that garage. So I phoned the policeman, I said, okay, I found my car, I know where it is. And of course, the policeman, being so good at what they do, he says to us, he says, oh, we can't go in there. We can't, we, we've got to have a reason for it. So anyway, having have discussions, it'll have cut a long story short, because of the girl coming out of the house and all this, and moving cars, and all sorts of things went on, and other cars, and people following us, and the policeman, and all sorts of things happening. And so eventually, the policeman says to me, he says, well, I'll tell you what, you go back to your car, and I'll make some inquiries. Hmm. <laughs> so I thought, okay, I'll do as I'm told. So I walked down the road, keeping my eye on where the policeman was, and thinking, if my car's in there, and I kept phoning the track of people, do you think it's still there? Could it be a possible, a glitch or whatever? So they said, no, everything looks like that's what it, where it'll be. So I'm keeping my eye on. The next minute, the policeman disappears. And now the police station is only just down the road. So he come down the road, went to the police station, and then he phones me. And he says to me, he says, Jonathan, um, I'm just going to go in to see the sergeant and see if we can think of a reason to go in and, and to check the car. And I'm thinking to myself, never mind that, just stay there. That's where the car is. But he didn't, so I'm keeping my eye on it, keeping my eye on it. And uh, this girl in the car, who obviously was to do with it, she kept coming round and watching me where I was. And then for some reason, whether I was on the phone to the tracking people or whatever it was, I missed it. But I looked again and saw that my car had moved. And I thought, it's moved. So off I went. <laughs> now, on foot. Uh, you know what I mean by doof? <laughs> it's a technical term to say I was running, okay? <laughs> so I got past the house, crossed this, this grass bit onto this other estate, and meanwhile, as I'm crossing the house, the, the policeman comes, parks up, and he phones me, and he says, oh, is that you crossing the field? I said, it is, I found my car. So he says to me, you've had any car? He says, you, you just go on this estate, turn left, turn left, turn left, and keep turning left, and you will eventually find it. So there it was. I could see the car, right number plate, and everything about it. Yes? The moral of the story is, don't give up. <laughs> <laughs> Get a tracker on your car <laughs> and keep the password up to date. <laughs> okay, right, now you can go. <laughs> but the issue is it was lost because it was of value to me. It mattered to me. And I didn't want someone else just taking advantage of that and disappearing. Now, of course, they understood that I'd got the police. They understood that I knew where the car was. They understood that there was obviously a tracker on the car, that although they had kept the car somewhere else uh, and watched it overnight, thinking, well, if it's got a tracker on it, they'll come for it, what they didn't take into account was God. Because God knew that it would take a while for me to be able to access my tracker. <laughs> so they kept it there for me, which was very kind of them. And then they put it into a garage, which was even kinder of them, so that nobody... I got my car back. There was no damage. There was nothing changed. There was nothing gone. There was nothing missing. There was a little bit of mess where the rifle threw things. Who gets that? That's what God's interested in when he lost, looks for the lost. 
He's looking for the lost. He's looking for you with more favor and passion than I was looking for my car. And he wants you and I this week to go to training. Sign up. Go to the training and train to be a rescuer. Train to be an attitude of Jonathan Harris that while ever there's a tracker, I'm searching, I'm looking, I'm not giving up, I'm going to make acts, I'm going to do whatever is necessary in order to be able to find the lost because God is into reaching the lost. Do you believe that? Now, is that 20 past eight or is that... Okay. Jesus said this in Luke 19 and verse 10. He said, I have come to seek and to save those who are in destiny, church. No? He says, I've come to seek and to save those who are tithe payers. Some of you are going, what's that? <laughs> Go over there and they'll sign you up. <laughs> I'll know that one, maybe. maybe. <laughs> anyway. Now, in Luke chapter 15, Jesus introduces us to the whole concept of lostness. Now, because of time, I won't read the chapter on the proviso that you all promise to read it later. Who promises? I only need one that doesn't promise. And I, <laughs> only one, and I'm reading it. <laughs> Okay, there's quite a few of you have promised not to read it, okay. Luke 15, and it is quite a long chapter. Okay, there's only 32 verses. But anyway, the parable of the sheep, the, what's, uh, the parable of the, uh, of the lost sheep, the lost coin and the lost son, uh, which is in Luke 15, um, is important because he is being criticized for being amongst lost people. He has been criticized because he is associating and eating with people who are tax collectors. Whoa. Now, we don't bother much with tax collectors, do we? We're not, we don't in, we're not in fear, I guess, the same as they used to be. So what would that be today? Car salesman, probably. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is, he's with tax collectors and notorious sinners. These are the rough ones. These are the people who are, that you know, you don't associate with. Yes, these are people that normally you would not be talking with. Yes, you would not be trying to make friends with. And so he is being criticized by them. And so when he says what he says in Luke 15, he is talking to the audience and his audience is not just the Pharisees and teachers of the Torah. He is actually talking in to them in front of an audience of sinners. And this is what makes it so special is he's speaking about them to someone else in their presence to let them know this is what God thinks about you. And I'm fantastic because God values you more than anything else. So he tells the story of the lost sheep. Yes, the shepherd goes looking for his lost sheep. Now, he's only lost one. He's got, 90, he's got 100 sheep. He's got 99. They've been out wandering all day, eating grass and whatever. And one of them decides the grass is greener somewhere else. It's just wandered off. Yes, it's not decided, oh, I'm going to get lost today. I'm going to run away. Sheep don't do that, okay? <laughs> They, they, they don't have that brain capacity to be able to think on their own. So, which is probably why we call sheep. But, but we, are, we are like that. <laughs> yes. So but what does he do? He says one of them, he gets the 99 in, they're in. So where are we? Are we in or are we out? Well, only you can answer that. I'm in. I'm in the 99. Are you in the 99? <laughs> if you're in the 99, the shepherd says, I'm leaving you. And I'm going looking for the one. So in other words, if you're in, it's not that you're less valuable to God, but he's actually, his focus is on those that are not in. And that's what Festival Teesside's about. It's not about the church having a fun time. 
It's about the church saying God's mission is more important than my own agenda that I'm going to go, we're going to finance it. We have raised, I don't know, three, four, three hundred and fifty thousand pounds, whatever. And uh, it doesn't matter where you put this, I'd just fall off the end, don't I? <laughs> if it got any closer, I'd just stand on the, the seat, I think. Could walk amongst you then. Uh, but uh, the only problem is you'd probably go, get down and shut up. <laughs> Where, where was I? Where was I? Festival Teesside. I have so much to do with that anyway. We've raised money. We've done that. So what I'm saying is, as a church, we have given. We have given well. Now, we haven't given the most money out of the 340,000 plus another 50, 390. There's about 390. There might be a few quid short. So if you've got the connect point... <laughs> Um, but seriously, it's because everyone's given. Yeah. It's because we have given. We have contributed to the cause. Be- why? Because it's a search and rescue. Yeah. And we're looking, saying, God, who is it that you are working in? Because we want to go there. We want to go because we know that you know where they are. So in other words, it's a bit like my car with a tracker. God is saying, he's got the tracker on all these lost people. <laughs> yeah. He's got a tracker on you, mind you, as well. But he's got a tracker on, and he's and he's saying to you, now go find them. I'll tell you where the tracker is. Now, for you and me, the tracker is going to be Festival Teesside. That's where they're going. So if we want to reach the lost, guess what? You go where they are, don't you? If you want to catch fish, where do you go? You go where the fish are, don't you? Yes. So that's that's what we've got to do. So the fish, and we've got a fish. You know, I can't think of fish now without thinking of uh, Britain's Got Talent. I don't know if any of you watch Britain's Got Talent. You've got that fish comes on, and the first thing, he's got this guy with a big, big fish head, doesn't he? And he just acts like a goldfish that is, forgets everything. Anyway, I, I, sorry, that was just a... <laughs> just a I don't know, it just when I say fish, it just comes to mind, and I think to myself, so you'll all go out and go watch Britain's Got Talent, won't you? Yeah, you might not read Luke 15, but you'll go watch <laughs> I, I know where I'm at. But, but, that's, but that's what I'm saying is God is interested in that. He's wanting to know, will you search for where, the, for where God is saying the lost are? Because your car's there, as it were, your precious thing is there. And what's precious to God should be precious to us. You see, God is pr- pr- very, very interested <laughs> in the lost people because they're of value. Amen? Good. So that was a lost sheep. He finds the sheep, and what does he do? He throws a party. Then you have a poor, poor old woman that loses, she's got 10 coins, loses one of them, but she doesn't worry about that. I think she doesn't think, all right, I've got nine. She goes and hunts all over the place. Yes, it's been misplaced. And you know what? Some of these people at Teesside Festival have been misplaced. They have been put there. They've gone out of fellowship with God or they've never had a fellowship with God because of somebody else. It's not their fault that they're lost, but their parents haven't told them about Jesus. The school hasn't told them about Jesus. The church hasn't told them about Jesus. There's numerous people in there and they have not heard about the good news of Jesus Christ. So in other words, the lost coin, it's valuable. It's worth searching for. Because that's what God wants us to do. But what does she do when she finds it? She throws a party. She gets all the phones, all the friends. Did they have phones in them days? Probably not. But she contacts them and says, let's celebrate. And then the lost son. Now, that's a longer story in there. <coughs> he wants his board of life on the farm. Uh, is that enough? So he says to his dad, can I have my part of the inheritance? And, uh, and so the dad, very lovingly, very generously, um, lets him have it. And so he goes off and he squanders it on wine, women, and song. Predominantly women, of course, is the emphasis in that passage. And, uh, and he ends up broke, ends up going back to a farm, uh, working as a pig farmer. And he's so hungry, he says, I would even eat what the pigs are eating. And, uh, but then he decides, come, the scripture says he comes to his senses, or that people would come to the senses, and then he comes back to the father's house, and the father sees him, the father's running towards him. I want to say to you, just on a 
a little side note there, the father in, in, in that culture will never run because he doesn't want his ankles to be seen. That's shame because it's an honor and shame culture. He will not run unless there is danger. The father is running to the son because the son is in danger from the villagers because if they get to him first, they will kill him. And the father runs to him, throws his arms around him, saying to everybody that's coming that sees the son, he's saying, you have to kill me to get to my son. And that's what God is saying to us. That's how much I love you. I gave everything I possibly could for you to know me. Yes, I mean, you're you're in my protection. If you will just come running to the father... I want to tell you, he will do everything in his capacity. He says on the thing, we, we did it earlier, didn't we? I think we sang it or did something. Um, is um, uh, That he comes and he gives him a robe and a ring. The ring's like a credit card. The ring is kind of like, it means to him he has authority to spend whatever he needs to of his father, what belongs to his father. That's the kind of thing. And what does the father say to him? He says, come, let us party. Let us celebrate. In other words, it doesn't matter how you get lost, whether or not you're lost because you are just wandering as a sheep. It doesn't matter if you're getting lost because you have just got waylaid with all sorts of other things. The grass is greener. That career would be better. That move would be better. If only I got married. If I, I had a relationship with her. If I had this, whatever it might be. Yes, we can wander off like sheep and we're not intending to get lost. But God says if you do get lost, even if you've just gone and wandered off, he says, I value you, I love you, I care for you, I want you. And I'm going to search for you and I'm going to leave all the 99 so that I can get the one. And he does the same. And that's what he does all the time. He says it doesn't matter whether you have got lost like the coin. It's just because someone else has has not given you the gospel. Someone else hasn't cared enough to tell you about Jesus. Just because other people have put other things first. Your parents might have got you involved with hobbies or with football or sport or whatever it might be. They might have been taking you to the beach on Sundays instead of to Sunday school. Whatever it might be, it might not be your fault. But you're still lost. And the father and the owner in this stage is searching because... It knows it's not your fault, you're lost. And it wants you back because you have immense value. You see, if I was to give you a 20 pound note, don't get too excited, because I've no intention. (laughs) But if, just have an imagination now, okay? Wild imagination, yes. If I was to give you 20 pound, yes, would you accept it? (laughs) Now, if I was to scrumple it up like that, anybody still interested? Oh, hey. What if I put it on the thing and I stamp on it? Anybody still interested? There's some of you have still got high hopes, I can tell. (laughs) It doesn't matter what happens to it, its value never changes. It doesn't matter where you've been, what you've done, who you've been with. It doesn't matter any of that. It doesn't matter who's spit on you. It doesn't matter who's abused you. It doesn't matter what what situation you've gone through. You might have gone through some unbelievably uh, horrendous situations and circumstances, and people rejected you, and people have, uh, have, have discarded you, and they don't want to know you, and you think that you're trash, but I tell you what, you never lose your value. In God, you are always valuable. You will never be more valuable than you are right now. And that's whether you know Jesus or not. Because the lost are valuable, because you only search for what's valuable, don't you? Okay, I can see you're struggling with this one. For example, when the bin men come to get my rubbish, I don't go running after them down the street. Do you? (laughs) Because it's rubbish, isn't it? But had Kath lost a diamond ring, if she had a diamond ring, if she lost a diamond ring, you can bet that she would get me to run down the road (laughs) after the bin men. (laughs) Yes. So, so they would be. So, what I'm trying to say is, if something is of value, that determines your response to it. Yeah. 
So, for example, the pens that we have on the back of the thing there, if you take them home, we don't cry about it. We don't worry about it. We don't even think about it. We just get more pens because they're only cheap pens. Just letting you know. Cheap <laughs> pens, all right? <laughs> just in case you were thinking it, no. <laughs> they're cheap pens. But if I have a, a very expensive pen that's been given to me by somebody special, then I am not going to leave that hanging around. And if that went missing, I would class it as lost because it has value. And that's what matters for every single one of us is that we understand that we are of value. You see, nobody gets lost on purpose. But one of the things that I find so often is we are very bad at giving directions. So, um, for, for, for example, let's say Somebody comes to you and they say, I'm lost. Can you tell me how to get to the town hall? And you're saying, so you, from your perspective, you, you could do this journey with your eyes shut. So what do you say? You say, all right, uh, turn left through the lights, down the road, through three sets of lights at the roundabout, turn left. You, you know what I mean? You, you've got it. But to the lost person who's trying to remember that, they are then get easily confused because they take you literally. Third tra- set of traffic lights, turn left. What you forgot to mention was the third set of traffic lights was a pel- pelican crossing with lights. So for them to think, oh, that idiot doesn't know what he's, <laughs> what he's saying. He's, he he, he doesn't have a clue. I mean, I've come to the third and there's no, you know, where, where do I turn left? Where do I... You know what I'm trying to say? So in other words, we have to be specific. We have to be simple. We have to understand and see from a lost perspective. The problem is we don't often see from a lost perspective, do we? We are so used to the route. We're so used to the terrain. Where you're so used to the venue that we're in. So, for example, when we're in the, uh, I'm in here, I don't think about where I am and, you know, and open my eyes and go, now, where am I? And how do I get out of here? But somebody that comes in for the first time will not be, be familiar with it. Oh, where's the toilets? How do I get in? The amount of times people I take workmen in and, uh, and they can't get out. Well, not till they finish the job. No. <laughs> but, but they can't get out because they don't do go left here, do that. Because we haven't, they haven't taken observation going into a building thinking, okay, I've come up these step, five steps, come and they've done that, whatever. But so for us, you and I, just on a practical level, on a, on a thing, when new people come in here, the, however strange, whatever it is, their first time, second time, third time, whatever it is, when they're new to this, for us, it's family, it's home. We know where we are. It's our terrain, it's our venue, it's our home, it's where we are. But when you have visitors, you say, where's the toilet? You say, oh, out the back door, around the lane. You, you, don't, you don't tell them a long-winded route to get there, do you? You keep it simple, top of the stairs, straight through that door, whatever it is. So we need to be very visitor-friendly. People who are coming as guests, people who are saying, is, could this be a home? Could this be a family that I can connect with? We need to understand that they are lost. They might not be lost from Jesus, but they're lost in this place. But we need to understand that same when we're using language with the lost, that they will take us literally. So you need to be careful with your vocabulary. You need to be careful with what you say. Yes? Are you redeemed by the blood of the Lord? As well, it is. I mean, are you? But the issue is, to a lost person, that is crackers. That's crazy. It doesn't mean anything. But when you have understood the whole pattern and why you can say that and you took know the history and what's in, in, embedded in that, then it takes on new meaning. But to somebody that's lost, it is meaningless. So we have to learn to be lost-centric. We need to be like God is. God is focused on the lost. And you and I need to be like that. Amen? We need to focus on the loss. So what I want to do, I'm going to finish up now, if you promise me. <laughs> I won't go there because I know you won't. Um, but the Connect, over there we've got a couple of uh, Festival Teesside Connect points. Your homework today is to go over there before you go for a coffee 
And to sign up for the training for this week, sign up to be a helper at the festival, sign up for anything that they ask you to sign up for, basically, <laughs> okay? Is, just ask me, is there anything else I need to sign up for? Jonathan said there was a lot to sign up for, I need to sign up. So I, I just make an orderly queue, okay? But, uh, but do that before you have a coffee. Because yep. I'm going to stand at the door and... <laughs> Okay, I'm, jo I'm joking, I'm joking. Father, I thank you for the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank you, Father, that you sent the most precious person. You sent your son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross so that we could know you, so that we who were lost and far from you could be in the family of God. We could be back in the sheep pen. We could be, uh, our value could be realized. And I thank you, Lord, that you have given us so much value. We recognize, Lord, that money left that's lost um, has the same value, but it cannot be used. I pray today, Lord, that we would be, who are found, would realize the value that we have so that you can spend us, so that you can use us, so that, Lord, that we can be an investment in the future of the kingdom of God. I pray more than anything else, Lord, that Destiny Church would be fully in and on board with Festival Teesside. Lord, I pray that we would see so many coming to know the Lord as Savior. We want to see, Lord Jesus, those who have got mislaid or been misused in the kingdom of God. Help us, Lord, as a church to get prepared for the harvest that you're bringing. I ask this in Jesus' lovely name. Amen. Thanks for listening today. If this message spoke to you and you would like prayer, or perhaps this is your first time listening, then we'd love to connect with you at www.thedestinychurch.co.uk forward slash connect. You're welcome to join us every Sunday in person or online at 11am.